So here we are again. I'm at a nice little farm strip in Washington State in the Waco INF and I thought I'd fly a quick circuit while I tell you about something I've been working on. I'm actually going to fly a circuit and a half from here because uh, I want to land in the opposite direction. This is a tricky strip, very steep approach from this end. So I've been flying the Waco for a while and uh, I couldn't understand why it didn't have a turn and slip indicator. This is a really important gauge in the simulator because it's the only way to fly coordinated turns. Of course I realised in real life it's probably not that important because you can feel what the aircraft's doing. In a turn you can feel any sideways forces pushing you out of your seat if you're not using the right amount of rudder. It's very difficult to simulate obviously, although it is possible with some kind of motion platform. Very expensive obviously. But there is another way to do it. In an open cockpit aircraft like this when you also get slipstream effects. So I've hooked up a couple of fans here and these are driven by the position of the balance ball gauge. This is a gauge that FSX always updates behind the scenes even if the gauge isn't displayed on the panel. So now we get a wind from one side or the other if we're out of balance and uh, the wind is proportional to how far out of balance we are. This works pretty well and uh, in its simplest form, which is what you can see here, the fans just follow the deviation of the balance ball. The only tweak I've got going at the moment is that we need to ignore some of the things the ball does while we're on the ground because that doesn't translate properly into slipstream effects. Now I've actually found these fans are quite distracting in your peripheral vision when they're spinning at low speeds. And there's also an issue with most domestic fans that they don't start up very quickly from uh, stationary. In practice, I found it's better to keep the fans turning all the time at a relatively low speed. That way they're less distracting and also much more responsive. Turning base here, we're gonna turn along these power lines. As soon as we're on base, we're gonna chop the power all the way back and uh, find we're still pretty high. Gonna be quite a short approach from here. So we're into a full on side slip here. Rudder all the way to the right, keeping the wing down, just finessing it a bit by changing the bank angle. Losing height very rapidly, we need to keep a check on that. And then watch out for those trees and the wires at the threshold. Get it straight, oh, we've still got a bit of that sideways motion, so I've messed it up a little bit here. Should really go around here, but got plenty of room. It's a 2,000 foot strip and this aircraft will stop in 150 feet. So we just made it, a little bit too tight for comfort there. Anyway, that's the story, works pretty well. It's a much more effective way of flying the aircraft in balance without fixating on the turn and slip indicator, even assuming you've got one in the cockpit. Stay tuned, more as it happens.